Hi, I'm Carrie Sundra with Elf and Glow Yarn, and today I'm dyeing with indigo. Indigo is super cool because it's like magic, but it's all about science. So come along with me and I'll show you a little bit about how it's done. Indigo can seem pretty mysterious if you don't understand how it works, but once you understand a little bit about the science behind indigo, it's actually reasonably straightforward. So a dye, a normal dye, how it works is you dissolve it in water, and then you put the yarn in the water, the dye bonds to the yarn, and you have your colored yarn. Indigo is a bit different. First of all, it doesn't really just dissolve in water. So it's kind of like sugar, you can think of it. So if you have sugar, and you have a glass of cold water, right? You pour cold water in the sugar, and you know, it doesn't really dissolve very well. It's just left with you're left with kind of lumps, right? You mix it up, you still have all of this lumpy sugar that's not really doing much. But when you put it in hot water, it dissolves much more readily. And with a little bit of stirring and a little bit of time, you would have pretty much no lumpy sugar left. So this isn't a perfect analogy, of course, but you get the idea that the hot water, you don't really see any sugar left at the bottom. Cold water, you still have a lot of sugar. So basically, the cold water is like putting indigo in just water. It doesn't dissolve. If you put your yarn in that, you know, you might get some of those blue particles sort of sticking to your yarn, but they're not going to be well bonded and they're just going to rub or wash right off. So first we have to make the indigo soluble. To make the indigo soluble, you add soda ash to make an alkaline environment. So I like to dye at about the pH of 10. And I also use thiurea dioxide to remove all of the excess oxygen in the water. That's the second thing that makes indigo soluble. In order to help you understand indigo solubility, I have created the following set of illustrations. You get indigo in, generally, in a blue powder which is already in an oxidized state. So it has already grabbed onto those oxygen molecules, and when you put it in water, it still is holding onto those oxygen mo molecules and doesn't dissolve. But as soon as you make the vat alkaline and add thiox, thiox then grabs onto all of the oxygen mo molecules, including the ones that the indigo is holding onto, causing the indigo to be reduced to turn a bright yellowy fluorescent green. So once indigo is soluble, you can enter the yarn in the vat, and all of the indigo water will be absorbed and move throughout the yarn. And then this kind of magical thing happens when you take the yarn out of the vat, the indigo grabs on to oxygen that's in the air. Woo! I'm indigo! I'm blue again! Woo! And it actually becomes bigger. And so instead of the, the indigo particles bonding chemically to the fiber, they actually get trapped in it because they grow in size by grabbing onto these oxygen molecules. And that's also kind of why indigo crocs. It can rub off after a while, because when you work that fiber and you move it back and forth, you can actually cause some of that indigo to become untrapped now. The other thing that helps with the solubility of indigo is having a nice warm vat. The warm vat helps the indigo penetrate the yarn faster, and it also helps the, uh, the oxygen reducing agent be more active. So your vat will be um, less likely to oxidize while you're using it. So. This is my vat here. Um, my vat is set up to do about three to five pounds of yarn at a time. And that makes, that makes me able to dye a nice sweaters quantity all at the same time and get pretty much the same color. So yesterday my vat got the space insulation upgrade and this just helps keep that heat in and keep it warm while I'm dyeing. And what I use to heat my vat is just this normal bucket heater and actually while we're while we're here you can kind of see what a nicely what the surface of a nicely reduced vat looks like it has a little bit of what's called the flower here bubbly indigo action and this coppery sheen on the outside and those are all good signs of a nicely reduced vat it'll also appear very yellowy green kind of a fluorescent yellow green in color it's difficult to see in this particular vat because I've you know, used a green, a green vat, but um, you'll be able to see later what the actual color, the properly reduced color is. So this is my bucket heater. 
and it's just one of these ones that's actually designed to boil water in a five gallon bucket. Um, and in a 33 gallon container like this is, it just serves to nicely ramp up the temperature to about 120 degrees. Um, between about 100 and 120 degrees is where an indigo bat dies its best. You don't want to take it above 120 because then you can actually start breaking down the indigo itself. Okay, we're about to put all of these skeins in the indigo. Um, this is about more or less two and a half pounds of yarn, about a sweater's worth. So um, I like to put them in all at once. And you can, I don't know if you can see this, but they're very well wet out. They're, they're dripping a little bit, but not too much. You don't want them like pouring water off because that will introduce oxygen. So basically lift up here, and very gently and kind of slowly dip the skeins into the vat. You don't want to go too fast because uh, you don't want the yarn to kind of get ahead of itself and start floating. You just want it to very gently lay in the vat. This is one of the reasons that I like having a tall vat so that the skeins uh, can hang within the vat. Um, at the very end they do kind of hit the bottom and tend to float a little bit, but it's uh, not as much as they do in like a smaller five gallon vat. And then we'll just let them sit here for a few minutes and absorb all that good indigo. Okay, so this yarn has been sitting in here for about five minutes and now we're going to take it out and watch it turn color. This is how I do bigger batches. As you can see, um, this is about two pounds of yarn here. It's all the same yarn, so it's going to be more or less all of the same color. And I take it out very slowly like this so that all of the um, indigo solution will kind of drip back in, but without introducing bubbles. Because again, like oxygen is, is the enemy of the indigo vat and we want to do everything we can to minimize oxygen and bubbles. Because once an indigo vat is reoxidized, then it won't die. And what will happen is your yarn will sort of look blue, but then when you wash it, it'll all just wash away. So we don't want that to happen. But as we can see, as you know, I'm taking the yarn out, we have that nice yellowy color meaning it's very well reduced, so this fat is dying very well. The next step is to just rinse the yarn in some water, and it'll lose a few shades of color here as the excess gets washed off. So the way that you make yarn darker with indigo is you keep dipping. The more dips, the better. This is an example of some of the range of colors you can get with indigo starting very, very light colors, and then going all the way to more and more dips, you can get pretty dark colors with three or more dips in an indigo vat. And indigo is also really beautiful when you over-dye other colors with it. So, for example, this was cochineal over-dyed with indigo to get this nice purple, as well to over-dyed with indigo to get a nice green. So if you'd like to see these indigo dyed yarns in person, I will be at Stitches West 2014. My booth is number 1140, and I'm Carrie Sundra of Alpenglow Yarn. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. Thanks.